vanilla and a faint a faint oakiness yes there is oak but it's not that dominant in the nose Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today we have the Kelly here on my cask. It's a single grain whiskey with an age of 40 years. It's part of the special releases of the Diageo company and uh, well there's the introductory video uh, for this range of whiskies and the Kelly is the only single grain whiskey in this range. And uh, I have a small sample from the distributor and I'm happy to taste it now here in front of the camera. And uh, the bottle is, well, they designed a new uh, label uh, looking very old. And this is, I think it's the first Caledonian bottling of Diageo ever done. So this is the first and the only distillery bottling available and the price is, I'm afraid, really high. It will be close to a thousand. The ABV is 53.3, so the casks from 1976 uh, were matured in such a way that there wasn't a too high evaporation which re would reduce the alcohol content. Um, the number of bottles is 5060 for all over the world and this is, well, uh, quite a number because whiskey which matured for 40 years in a cask uh, leaves a third or a quarter of the liquid level in the cask. Well, 53.3% ABV could be that there was more whiskey left in the cask. so. Uh, I would suggest 20 casks at least for this bottling. Um, yeah, this is bottle number 3956, natural cask strength, limited release, vintage 2015. Um, there is a, a huge, a big box with this bottle and showing Haymarket Station, and this is the railway station in Edinburgh, uh, where the distillery lies on the opposite side, uh, or lay at the opposite side. Uh, when I visited the distillery, the picture you find in my frame, um, it was, well, s slowly decaying, and uh, today I think there's only the chimney left. Uh, it might be a heritage official landmark uh, and around it I think there are flats now. So they they tore the complete distillery down and Alfred Barnard, the well the traveller, the whiskey traveller of the United Kingdom, uh, published his book in 1880 something uh, called the Whiskey Distilleries of the United Kingdom and in this the Caledonian distillery was described as the most modern distillery in that time they had everything everything new and this would was the blue or should be the blueprint for all distilleries all over the world or all over Europe. Um, uh, the whiskey distillery contained single malt or a malt whiskey equipment three stills as well as grain whiskey equipment and uh, a total workforce of 200 were busy producing whiskey and it was then I think the biggest whiskey distillery in the United Kingdom and in the book they said to a certain time it was the second biggest whiskey distillery in, in the United Kingdom well and then they stopped production in 1988 um, uh, during the Great British Recession and there was enough, enough whiskey available people had no money so they switched over to gin or vodka um, <clears throat> and therefore Whiskey was too expensive because they had to mature in casks and those casks uh, increased uh, the price and the stock holding meant you need money and money was rare during recession and interest rates were high and so on and so on. 
Yeah. So 53.3 ABV. And there is a small leaflet in it. And, ah, stinky. Ah, printing color. I think it's, it's, it's quite new. You've seen the, the graph for the decanter for my water because it's higher than 50% ABV, so I will dilute a little bit. And so here's in this leaflet, I think. Ah, built in 1855 on green fields as Edinburgh expanded westward, the Caledonian distillery soon found itself at the heart of the city's west end. For a century, the pride of Edinburgh it was one of the largest distilleries in the United Kingdom. At its peak, 200 men made grain whiskey there. Though within its walls there also lay an entire malt whiskey distillery complete with three pot stills, which was making Scotch single malt whiskey in 1891. As with many large places of work, those workers gave it a friendly nickname. Some spelled it the Kelly, with an IE in the end, or the Calais. It was just an L and a Y in the back. The Kelly, double L and a Y, has been chosen for this precious, rare 40 year old release. Yeah, the model distillery. <clears throat> Seven and a quarter acre site. Running rails, special uh, automatic loading of wagons. Yeah. Um, in this additional book, which isn't part of the uh, of the box, um, they say to the tasting note here, um, and there is as well a picture of this really an old picture of this working distillery with a uh, railroad in front. <clears throat> um, <laughs> Warm antique gold with russet lights. Well, this is quite dark and uh, I haven't found any uh, sentence about being uncolored. Um, the special releases of Diageo are typically non-colored. Um, but here they do not say it explicitly on the label. I think Diageo typically says nothing to the usage of spirit caramel. Uh, during the bottling process, so they say nothing about it, but in some countries, in Denmark and Germany, they have to tell the people what's in, and uh, yeah, <clears throat> so they do not say it and they deliver it to, to those countries, and so I suggest it's not colored. <clears throat> uh, appetizing, mouth-watering in the nose, sweet fruit chews and fresh fruit peach, ripe melon, and a spirited top note of zesty orange peel over a base of vanilla sponge with a hint of fresh plant, plant, plained, fresh plained, ah, plained, uh, plained oak. And so on, and so on. They find everything in this bottle. Body medium, palate immediate with fresh acidity, lightly sweet and oily, with with smooth chocolate and vanilla, a spicy warmth and a slightly bitter pungency Whoa! emerging on the mid palate. At reduced strength, the texture becomes softer and the taste cooling and creamy. Finish long and complex. Dark chocolate and fresh oak wood. <clears throat> I found out uh, that this whiskey was matured in refill hogsheads. So that means that the, lot, the, the most of the uh, fresh taste of those casks uh, had to be gone in other whiskies which matured in those casks before. And then the whiskey rested for 40 long years uh, in the casks. And well, there must be a lot of oak coming out of those casks over the time, but the, the vanilla and the caramel, which come over first uh, from the caramelized wood sugars, well, those are, well, those have to be gone in the first one. Oh, 
very fruity. This is not a malt whiskey style. No, it's fruity. It shows I'm from grain. And uh, well, Diageo uh, starts to to market single grain whiskies since a few years, and there's th this Hake Club. There's a video of it here um, as a single grain whiskey, and now this one is uh, a second one, um, but only, as I said, 5,060 bottles. Uh, and the Hake Club is unlimited because it's filled from the actual working uh, grain whiskey distilleries of Diageo. A little of this orange peel zest. Fruit gum. Haribo. Vanilla. And a faint, a faint oakiness. Yes, there is oak, but it's not that dominant in the nose. Peaches. Honey melon. No banana, no sultana. No. Have a drop of water. Just to bring it down below 50. I'll put just a little bit in that glass. <clears throat> it takes quite a time to mix completely. Yeah. It's still quite high, so it's not becoming hazy. But you you, you see the uh, the light fractions in it. Lighter, a little bit vanilla coming up. Caramel is missing, a little oakiness showing. Honey is reducing, orange quite strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, acidity. <laughs> a little drier. <laughs> No, hefty dryness, but as well a little oiliness, a little sweetness, but the dryness is dominant. And the spiciness of the oak was there, hefty impact, uh, but getting lower, softer, aftertaste, switching over to dark chocolate. And the, the dryness still there. The fruiting is very, very typical to grain whiskey, and the this intense taste. This is from the really old, forty years old casks, uh, and I'm afraid <laughs> I'm no favorite of that. Well, um, to sum up, this is a very pleasant, light, fruity whiskey on the nose and strong, hefty, and for my personal feelings, unpleasant whiskey in my mouth. And the after well, aftertaste, well, it's rewarding. It's much more better than the taste. Um, but I do not like the taste, so uh, either I, I sit beside the glass and, and, and sniff for for four hours, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then afterwards not <laughs> half an hour. Oh, quite good. So it's uh, not really balanced, and uh, to pay close to a thousand for that bottle means ten times ten other bottles for each hundred would be. <laughs> much better 
for my mother's son. Yes, definitely. So I'm no friend of the single grain whiskies. Uh, also the other ones, it's, it's not really mine. So I'm a malt whiskey lover and uh, this bottle will be definitely a collector's item. This is the first and the first really old bottling of the Caledonian distillery from Edinburgh and uh, this will have a collector's value because it's the first bottle available. I'm not aware of a uh, bottling from the very old Caledonian distillery. They typically bottled their blend under different names. So th there is this distillery character, the single is not there. So this is definitely a bottle for the collectors and therefore the price is five times increased. And they will pay it, yes. Worldwide there will be definitely buyers for 5060 bottles. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned, there's more to come and feel free to give your comments in our whiskey database and discuss this bottle uh, with me in our whiskey forum on whiskey.com. <laughs>